Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. And let's get right to it, in the last episode we had to deal with our first retaliation mission, and not only that, we also unfortunately encountered the second of the three Chosen, the Hunter, who made that mission quite a bit more difficult. As a result, both of our rangers are currently on the injured list, with Heliporus being out for well over a month, still his sacrifice has once again earned him your vote as the most valuable member of our squad in the last mission. Today we are hopefully looking at a slightly easier task, although before we get going, one quick note, just like in the last episode, but especially in this one, there will be a lot going on in the early stages of the video, as quite a few new mechanics of the War of the Chosen expansion are introduced. With XCOM 2's base game already being quite a bit more complex than Enemy Unknown, this can lead to some information overload, which is also why I would recommend new players to play the game without War of the Chosen first, it is definitely a lot to digest in these early episodes. I hope that I will be able to explain it all though, and without spoiling anything, so let's get to it, time to head back to the bridge. So, right away we are informed that we could scan for some rookies, but let's not forget that our scan for supplies has not yet finished, and at the moment we don't desperately need too many new recruits, although that could change. Commander, the resistance forces we just contacted in this region have provided us all the intel they have on the Chosen actively working in the area. And just where do you think you're going? If it's a fight you're after, you better bring everything you've got. And yes, another quick reminder of our encounter with the Chosen Hunter, who is indeed controlling our home region of West Africa, so any missions that appear there have a chance of the Hunter showing up. However, the game does thankfully have a cooldown on Chosen appearances, so at least for the next two missions we should be safe, at least from the Hunter, and that also comes with a few exceptions that we don't need to get into at this point. Instead, the map is already looking quite busy, but we have some supplies to salvage, so let's quickly wrap that up at the overgrown checkpoint here. Avenger plotting new course. Incoming message for you, Commander. Patching it through to your quarters now. I had high hopes for the Resistance under your leadership, Commander, and you have outdone yourself. Alright, this is basically our end of the month report, although it somehow takes place on March 22nd. For now, it only presents us with an overview of our activities, and there have been quite a few, and we are also informed of our upcoming monthly income, increased from 150 to 174 supplies thanks to those civilians we rescued last time. However, those funds are not simply automatically transferred to us, instead we actually have to pick them up on the map. A grade or any other measurement of success is not awarded, although the spokesman sounded quite happy with us for now. Chosen are a tough group to infiltrate, but we've managed to gather intel on their latest actions, and have a rough idea of how close each is to reaching their ultimate goal of locating the Avenger. Okay, so the first of many new mechanics in War of the Chosen that we will learn about here today. I did already mention that over the course of our campaign, the Chosen will gradually gain knowledge about our operation, and the higher that knowledge becomes, the more severe the planned activities that we can see here will become. For now, both Assassin and Hunter are planning one of the weaker activities, a retribution, a simple income decrease in a particular region. That activity will simply happen over the course of the next month with no way of stopping it, so keeping that knowledge bar low is the best defense for now. To do that, we mainly need to prevent the Chosen from capturing any of our soldiers, like the Assassin did with Praetal Mox in Episode 3, as that gives them a big knowledge boost. Commander, we have intel suggesting the aliens are working on developments that threaten our ability to stop the Avatar project. We can conduct guerrilla operations to disrupt one of these efforts, but we'll have to choose carefully. We don't have the resources to intercede everywhere. Now, of course, the Chosen are not the only ones trying to stop us. Advent does also come up with some stuff to make life miserable for us, and that's what these dark events here are. Currently, Advent is planning two of them. The one on the left would give Stun Lancers the ability to move after a melee attack. We haven't actually met them yet, but believe me, this is not good. While the one on the right would render Overwatch shots against Advent Troopers harmless, as they would always miss. Now, thankfully, these two conditions do not go into effect immediately. Instead, this is basically our warning that they will become active in the next month. Until then, we will have opportunities to counter them, ensuring that they never become a problem. 
However, even if they do, they usually don't last forever, but still, we definitely do not want to take these things easy. Commander, the factions have pledged their support to XCOM, and they're ready to carry out your orders. As our influence with these groups increases, our capabilities will grow in kind. Okay, so to keep things from becoming too unfair, with both the Chosen and Advent working against us, we have some means of fighting back of our own, namely the so-called resistance orders. My people are up for some additional work if you've got any orders for us, Commander. Now, resistance orders are not to be confused with covert actions, which we'll get to in a moment. These orders are basically small bonuses that are available to us, although, as always, we can't pick them all and have to make a choice. As you can see, we have two different orders available to us at the moment. The first one would reduce the price of new recruits down to 15 supplies, from their original price of 40, while the second one would double all resource rewards from scanned rumors, just like that overgrown checkpoint that we are currently still scanning. And for the time being, we can only select one of these orders, as we also only have one slot available to us to activate it. If we manage to increase our influence with the Reapers, their slot will open up as well, but for now we have no other choice but to use our own wildcard order slot. And because I don't think that we desperately need any new recruits at this point, let us instead go for the supply scanning bonus, which we can simply drag and drop into its slot. Commander, we'll need to send our own soldiers out to work with the resistance factions to complete these covert actions. They'll be gone for a few days, but this will help us build influence with the Resistance while generating material support. Alright, now we're getting to the Covert Actions, the second way for us to gain some advantages. Every month, and once we've built the Resistance Ring also a little bit more frequently, we can send people on these secret missions that are given to us by the various Resistance factions. And while we can simply use these to grab whatever reward we find most interesting at any given moment, these covert actions are also our way to learn more about the Chosen and to eventually defeat them once and for all. Right now, we have three covert actions available to us from the Reapers, and we also have a fourth one allowing us to make contact with the Templars, another resistance faction, and as you can see, all of these actions require some soldiers to be performed, they also have a duration, displayed on the right side above the necessary personnel, and they also come with a reward, displayed to the left of that. And yes, we can't just send anyone on every mission, some of them also have particular rank requirements that we currently do not fulfill. This operation is going to require some field experience, Commander. We'll need to send one of our vets to lead the effort. That also makes our choice of which covert action to undertake first a little bit easier, and because someone like Prejal Mox could really help us out at this point, let's attempt the rescue mission first. We are sending two rookies on this one, once again both submitted by Patreon supporters in the naming rights tier and above, and let's quickly meet the two of them before we send them out. First up, we have Sophie Blade, nicknamed Vintage, submitted by Vintage Blade, and born in Norway on the 30th of August 1998. She was originally a candidate to become a member of the Jägertruppen, one of the Norwegian military special forces groups. But after the Council Nations surrendered to the aliens, she went AWOL, using her training as a special forces candidate to hunt the aliens in the frozen north. Having collected a few scars of her own while fighting the aliens, she has been more than capable of giving some back. And using her extensive experience and knowledge of the frozen and mountainous terrain to her advantage, she has been more than capable of being a nuisance to Advent, even while using inferior technology. When she heard about the Resistance, she decided to join up so that she can help take Earth back. Now, that already sounds pretty promising, but let's also give some time to Golden Warhawk by Golden Warhawk, born in Ireland on July 13th, 1999, and his scouting reports reads as follows. Despised alien, Chrysalid. During the first invasion, taking part in guerrilla warfare against the aliens in Ireland. Heavy casualties in the civilian population in what will later be known as terror attacks caused nationwide military draft. One of the few survivors of the first ambushes. XCOM could not be everywhere at once. Chrysalid modus operandi has wreaked havoc among the population. After 2015 defeat of XCOM initiative, Golden was part of many guerrilla-style attacks on the enemy lines over the years. During the catastrophic failure of what will later be known as Operation Tintin to free captured freedom fighters, Golden's wife and child were killed by chrysalids alongside his squad mates while trying to escape Advent ambush. Badly injured and captured, his whereabouts were unknown until a successful raid on a random enemy stronghold by Team Zulu one of the few MIA agents found on site. 
Upon learning about a large-scale operation to push back alien forces at the resurrection of XCOM project, he volunteered in one of the free havens to be drafted. Injuries sustained during imprisonment led to amputation of left eye. Has been observed to show bursts of rage upon fighting enemy chrysalid units. Alright, sounds like he will feel right at home in this one, and if he survives the mission he will also receive a plus 6 bonus to his dodge stat, potentially allowing him to occasionally duck out of the way of enemy shots that would otherwise hit him. In any case, that is our pair of soldiers who will now look for Mox's whereabouts, so let's send them on their way and hope for the best. Overt is our specialty. Let's just hope your people can keep up. Commander, the Resistance has a hidden cache of resources stashed outside of Advent's reach. But that means we'll have to fly over and scan the area if we want to recover this stuff for ourselves. And here we are now informed of the fact that those 174 supplies we were promised earlier do indeed need to be picked up with the Avenger, so unless we spend some time scanning for them, we will not benefit from our monthly funds in any way. Thankfully, acquiring them will only take three days, and again you can see that the map is becoming increasingly cluttered, but for the moment let us stay focused on what's really important and finally finish clearing out that overgrown checkpoint. Strategic resource located. And there we are, 62 supplies are now received and we are also once again reminded of the supply drop here, but that one will stick around for a while, so instead I would say it is finally time to make contact with the resistance in Western Europe. After we pay the initial intel cost to make contact, we'll have to scan the region for a few days before the local resistance cell comes out of hiding. Once we find them, we'll be up and running in the new region. This is rather straightforward. Making contact does of course also take some time, 6 to 8 days in this case, and it also costs us 80 intel. At the moment, we have 132, but the further we move away from West Africa, the higher that price will become, so we won't be able to just go around and contact everyone right away. Still, Western Europe is well within our means and once we have established contact, they will also add 95 supplies to our monthly funds, so let's get this started and see how long it actually takes. Setting course for the Western European Ward. Commander, using intel collected so far, we've managed to locate a resistance cell operating out of this region. It'll take us some time to scan for their exact position though. Attempting to establish local regional contact. So much of my own research based upon this simple design. If only I had known. Ah, Commander, excellent timing. There's been some progress. I've managed to break down several key components of the chip implanted into your skull. My analysis reveals that its primary function was that of a conduit, passing a vast amount of data directly to your cerebral cortex. With the primary connection severed, much of that data is lost. Several fragments do remain, however. Uh, ghosts, if you will. Observe. Tactical combat simulations. War games. The sheer volume of encounters you were processing was astounding. It... It is truly remarkable that you survived as long as you did. Though this may seem disconcerting, there is still some good news. This chip bears a striking resemblance to a medical implant I briefly assisted in developing at the Gene Therapy Clinic in New Providence. My understanding was that the implants were intended for high-ranking Advent officers only, captains or above. Retrieving a chip from such an officer would be the only way to know for certain. A greater understanding of these implants would undoubtedly benefit us all, Commander. New objective added. Okay, so while we attempt to make contact with the Resistance, Dr. Tigan has completed alien biotech. As a result, we have acquired a new objective, examining the corpse of an Advent officer. And since we have already killed multiple, we could in theory start working on that right away. The Advent officers have clearly been modified to allow for their subordinates to receive new orders psionically. The implanted chip is the key. A heavy hint here that following down this path could perhaps get us closer to psionic abilities, but completing alien biotech did also unlock autopsies for all kinds of aliens that we've already killed so far, as well as a new facility, the infirmary, which helps our soldiers recover from injuries much faster. 
As you can imagine, on Legend difficulty, this is something that we would like to have access to pretty quickly, although that is true for quite a few facilities, so we'll have to see how fast we can actually get one up and running. We also have our next research inspiration, this time of Resistance Radio, which is unfortunately not on our list of high priority research projects. Taking a closer look at the list of available projects, we can also see that the inspiration did only reduce the research time by two days from 14 down to 12, and that is definitely not good enough to now prioritize it. Instead, we could now continue right away with the next project required for the main plotline, the officer autopsy, which would only take us five days. However, despite being marked as an important research project, I don't think we desperately need to complete it right this second. Instead, what we are going to focus on, at least for the moment, are magnetic weapons. Yes, they do take 42 days to complete, but increasing our firepower is one of the most important things we need to do early on, and we can still squeeze in the autopsy if we reach a point where we need to unlock it. The science is eager to begin, Commander. And with that, our science team once again has their work cut out for them, so let's head back to the bridge. Commander, you should establish contact with the local resistance network as soon as possible. The aliens are undoubtedly moving forward with their plans. And yes, we will continue to make contact right away. Commander, we have a priority message coming through. It looks like an encoded signal from the resistance. Patching it through to your quarters now. It would seem your recent activities have gotten Advent's attention. Our unwelcome guests are on the move. Advent has been diverting considerable resources and personnel to covert facilities across the globe. The exact details of these operations are highly classified. However, they do have one thing in common. A single word that appears in all their files. Avatar. I believe the black site we had previously uncovered to be but a part of this Avatar project. Based on what we have uncovered so far, its true scope is far greater. This project is being directed from the very top of Advent, from a source I am still unable to determine. All attempts to uncover its identity have met with failure. It is time to take a more direct approach. Though we may not know the exact nature of this Avatar project, we can still disrupt it. We must root out these hidden facilities with the help of local resistance cells, disrupt our enemy's operations, and in the process, uncover the truth. Locate the source of this Avatar project, and then destroy it. Were the enemy to succeed in their efforts, I am certain it would mean the end for us all. I am confident you will take whatever measures necessary to eliminate this threat, Commander. We're tracking the aliens' progress on this Avatar project here. If they finish what they've started, it sounds like it'll be the end for all of us. Alright, so meet the Avatar project, XCOM 2's Doomsday Tracker. In case it didn't become clear enough, letting the aliens complete this project is the ultimate condition for failing the game, and avoiding that has just moved up to the top of our list, right next to defeating the three chosen. Now, I won't spoil anything more than what we have just learned regarding the details of this Avatar project, suffice it to say we want to keep a very close eye on everything that has to do with it. have dedicated an immense amount of time and resources to this project, Commander. If successful, it will mean the end of human civilization. At the top of the screen, you also just saw a progress bar, and no, we are not starting off with an empty one. Instead, the discovery of the project already adds three points out of a possible 12. Various events in the game will increase that bar further, while we will have various means of reducing the counter. We'll talk more about that some other time though, for now let's keep making contact. And it looks like we have finally found our mission for today. Our next operation will put us right in the middle of chosen territory, Commander. 
There's a good chance they'll show up to interfere, so we should plan accordingly. Alright, so this is another Guerrilla Ops mission, like the one we completed in Episode 2, although this one gives us some intel and, crucially, it also allows us to counter the Lightning Reflexes Dark Event, so that nasty Overwatch disabling against troopers won't come into effect. Setting course for West Africa. The mission itself also takes place in West Africa, but the Hunter should still be on cooldown after appearing in the last mission. Now, our squad for today consists of the familiar faces of Sharpshooter Sapphire, Grenadier Twitchy and Specialist Schwaminian, while we also take another rookie with us, Adolin Tarias, nicknamed Tsunami. Allegedly born in Japan in November of 2005, we don't have a whole lot of information about her. With the little background provided by her, it is assumed that she was a mercenary in a small town before the first invasion, in which she previously fought the aliens on non-XCOM terms. Now that she finally got the chance to join us, she is more than willing to participate in the fight. Well, sounds like she is eager to prove herself, but before we get going, let us quickly equip Specialist Schwaminian with the hat trigger that we picked up last time. This will give him a 5% chance of a shot not costing an action, which is admittedly not much, but we might as well use it while we can. And with that, let us now embark on what is hopefully going to be a smoother mission than last time. Deployed. In position to drop. A hidden alien communications relay in this area is being used by Advent to transmit critical data back to their network. The loss of that data will stop their latest project in its tracks. So we're moving in to destroy the relay before they complete the transfer. We're expecting a strong contingent of security forces. Neutralize them and secure the site. Destroy that relay at all costs. Menace 1-5, the communications relay is up ahead. Move in and destroy the target. We're in a concealed position. Alright, here we are once again in concealment and with what is likely going to be another pretty tight 7 turn timer. The alien transmitter that we need to destroy is further up ahead, but not too far away, and it is also located fairly close to the edge of the map. As such, the plan here is to use that edge to advance towards the transmitter, as our enemies are likely hanging out in a more central location. The first turn at least allows for four safe dashes and also gets us onto the high ground, and so we can keep scouting ahead with our rookie Adolin on the second. That only reveals a few civilians that we don't want to get too close to in order to keep concealment, but otherwise we should be safe to move up once more. And with that, we are already almost in sight range of the transmitter. Let's see what Twitchy can spot here. Orders confirmed. Moving out. No enemies just yet, so let's keep pushing. With the clock ticking down, we need to find those aliens quickly. Got some hostiles grouped over here. Objective here. Commander, we have a positive ID on the alien relay. Okay, so that is admittedly a little bit more than we bargained for. Two groups of hostiles are now uncovered, with one of them patrolling right next to the transmitter. If they stay there, they might be a good target for one of Twitchy's grenades, but for now let's bring everyone else into ambush positions so that we can strike on the next turn. We've got an enemy squad here. And, of course, a third group moves into view now as well, so in just a moment this could get very interesting. Alright, so the trio of troopers has moved even closer to the transmitter now, while we now also have a sectoid and a trooper on our right, albeit right next to an explosive gas tank. Still, we have to be very careful who to engage first, as the first shot will break concealment and activate all aliens in range. And yes, that third group on our left is also just barely still in range, so let's bring Schwaminian back a bit here and then move Tsunami into his old spot, Good copy. Moving on target. as this will now allow Twitchy to move over one tile and break a line of sight with that sectoid. On my way. Afterwards, we can activate a round of overwatches on everyone but Twitchy. Eyes on the prize. Affirmative. Covering now. 
and then launch a grenade with her against the troopers near the transmitter. Three enemies are better than the two on our right, plus these can all shoot us, while the sectoid likely won't. solid overwatch ambush, I had hoped for at least one more trooper kill, but we did some good damage against the sectoid, let's see what the aliens can come up with now. Okay, that hurts a bit, but despite the height advantage and the cover, Twitchy takes some damage here. Taking heavy fire! The alien transmission is still active and we're running out of time. Get to the relay and take it out, ASAP. Right, so we're down to three turns on the timer, our grenadier is injured and the guy holding the flashbang is mind controlled. All in all, a tense situation, but we should hopefully be able to solve it. Priority number one is to regain control of Shorminian, and for that we are going with a grenade from Tsunami. This is for you! Lovely, that's her second kill, and we unlock an achievement as well, while the mind control is now removed and Specialist Angma is back under our control. And as a result, we can now move him into a flanking position to hopefully take out one of the troopers. Alright, he hits but doesn't get the kill. Still, cleaning this up won't be too difficult now. That is, if Sharpshooter West can hit this 95%er with a pistol. Enemies down. And she can, which means we are now already using Twitchy's second grenade to eliminate the remaining two troopers, but we are moving her back a bit first, just in case that third group moves closer on the next turn, I think we could use a small break in the action. This is for you! Targets eliminated! And there we are, two enemy groups are defeated, number three has thankfully not made contact yet, and we still have two turns left on the timer to destroy the transmitter. So far so good, let's move up our rookie next and see if we can already get her in range of the object. And indeed we can, so we might as well take the shot, a hit is guaranteed and we only need to deal six points of damage. Lovely, that gets us halfway there, and moving up Grenadier Grace here should allow us to get the other half. We've confirmed destruction of the relay. The alien transmission is down. Eliminate any remaining hostiles and move to evac. All right, that is the first objective completed. Now we only need to clear out what I assume is only one more group of enemies. And with the timer removed, we can now let them come to us. So let's bring Shorminian up onto the high ground and heal up Twitchy with his gremlin drone. We have one charge that does not require a medkit, so we might as well use it. Gremlin, medical detail! Sapphire West then moves back slightly and goes on pistol overwatch, and that completes our turn. Alright, no enemies in sight just yet, so let's continue to put everyone into good positions and activate another round of overwatches. Moving to overwatch. Got it covered. Affirmative. Covering now. It's killing time! Affirmative. Covering now. 
Okay, still nothing, so once more, a few small moves to grab full cover, and then another round of overwatches it is. Alright, looks like we might be sitting here a while if we keep this up, so how about we send Twitchy up a bit to perhaps reveal something. And there they are, looks to me like they were just barely outside of our sight range. In any case, the third group of hostiles is now active, and we have another sectoid and two troopers to defeat. However, with the rest of our squad pretty far away from the enemies, it might be best to pull back here for now, so let's do exactly that, get our rookie onto the high ground as well, and activate Overwatch once more. Come get them. Got it covered. Okay, so the sectoid raises a zombie, no danger here, and the troopers also trigger some reaction fire. So, no enemy fire on this turn, but our reaction shots did not exactly impress either, as all three enemies are still standing. However, Twitchy has an easy flank on one of them here, so perhaps we can use that to grab the next kill. Okay, that's one down, let's see if Sharpshooter West can make it two with a 97% against the already injured trooper. Great, that only leaves the sectoid, which was out of range of tsunami on the roof, so we have to move a bit closer. Ugh, I got nothing. She misses, but either way, Schwaminion will now use his flashbang to disorient the sectoid. That disables all psionic abilities, gives a minus 20 aim penalty, and also kills the raised zombie. Light him up! And so, as a result, on its turn, the sectoid can only take a bad shot against us. Taking fire over here! As expected, that misses, and so we can now go for the kill, although the disorient would last for one more turn. Still, no need to waste time, so let's blow up the sectoid's cover with our last grenade. Up next, we can then move in Miss Grace, and perhaps she can already land the killing blow. No longer a threat. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. All right, there we are. Mission complete. And apart from that injury to Twitchy, it was a pretty flawless one. So, as always, let us commemorate that with a picture. And then we can return home and hope that Twitchy won't be out of action for too long. With a mug like that, you might get Advent to surrender after all. Advent officials revealed today's maneuver by local peacekeepers was a planned exercise. Citizens should not be alarmed. All weapon fire and wounds were simulated to better train Advent forces. I'm always pleased when the troops return without any reported casualties. I can't hope for a better outcome. Right, so 13 days, that's Twitchy's recovery time, I think that's okay, but the case for the infirmary definitely grows stronger and stronger. Apart from rookie Adeline, we sadly also don't have any promotions, so let's see which class she was assigned. And with that, we finally have a second sharpshooter that was definitely needed, although we will likely send out Sapphire West again on that next mission to get that promotion, we desperately need to get someone up to that next rank of sergeant as quickly as possible. In terms of loot then, we only acquire the corpses, probably because we killed quite a few enemies with explosives, and doing so does unfortunately destroy any loot that they hold, but in my opinion that is preferable to our troops taking unnecessary risks. Excellent work, Commander. Your efforts continue to bolster the resistance movement across the globe. 
And here we are, mission completed, 96 intel acquired, that will go a long way towards making contact with the next region, and very importantly, we did also counter our first dark event, so we can continue to use Overwatch against all advent troopers. Commander, having these two soldiers continue to work together has paid off. They know each other well enough at this point that we can have them train as a pair for additional tactical capabilities. Alright, and to wrap things up, we are introduced to one last new mechanic, Soldier Bonds. By spending extended time on missions together, our soldiers can develop bonds with one another, with some combinations having better chemistry and therefore bonding quicker than others. Now, bonds are not formed automatically, instead we have to confirm them, and in the case of Twitchy and Schwaminian here, I think we want to do that. Confirming a level 1 bond, there are 3 levels in total, gives them a special teamwork ability and allows one of them to grant the other an extra action once per mission. Commander, the media is a powerful tool. Just ask Advent's propaganda machine. I say it's time we turn it against them. By spreading the word of our soldiers' exploits in combat, we can bolster morale throughout the resistance. And with a lovely photo here, we confirm our first bond, but there will be many more to come. I hope you're ready to be famous. For today though, I think we have seen enough of the new mechanics, and with another successful mission under our belt, I think it is time to make the cut. In the next episode, we will then make contact with our first new region, hopefully level someone up to sergeant, and who knows what else the game has in store for us. Until then, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.